Hi, it's Luke on the final week of my glorious holiday. Glorious because I have not been reading shitty books. But do not panic. Next week I will be reading a shitty book. Well, I assume it's shitty. Uh, regular new episodes of The Book Was Better will return next week, Tuesday the 19th. Starting with Superman Returns, the junior novel by Louise Simonson. And our good friend Hector Weenus will be joining us for that one so look forward to that but in the meantime today i've got another classic episode now this one is really reaching back this is episode four of the book was better bear in mind this one you're listening to uh next week fuck what am i even talking about next week you'll be listening to episode 151 so this was four so look if you think this sounds unprofessional right now imagine how unprofessional it sounds all the way back then in number four we didn't know what we were doing we were wee babbies so uh, it's Baby Luke, Baby Jessica McLeod, and we are talking about High School Musical. And the reason I chose that one is because we ended up doing all three High School Musical films, and uh, there were a lot of running jokes that came out of those episodes. It was the origin of Hoop Hoops Doggies? Hoop Doggy? Very, very... Look, imagine what this episode's going to be like based on the uh, grand performance I'm giving you. Look, I'm on holiday, okay? This is this is me taking a break from a holiday to give you a classic episode from the archive because you're too lazy to go to the Book Was Better website and look it up for yourself. Anyway, uh, yes. What's up, my hoop stoggy? Uh, we learned that basketball was the most important thing. We learned how American high school worked. It was all a very fantastic journey. So um, listen to this one. Hope you enjoy. And... Uh, I don't know, I'm a bit frightened to listen to these old ones myself. I feel like it's such a different dynamic. The great thing about them, though, is that Jess used to do all the hard work and would, was really organised and would write a lot of the notes. And um, I didn't have to drive those shows. I was just able to be, uh, like, obnoxious on the side and make dumb comments and innuendos and comedic relief. Now, though, the whole weight of this empire we've built, this organisation, is on my back and it is is bearing down on me all the time. But that's something for next week with Superman Returns. I'm going back to whatever it is I'm doing on my break. It's something planned. So while I relax, listen to Classic Book Was Better number four. Okay, Huey Lewis, send them back in time. Hey you, put down the popcorn and turn on the light. Welcome to The Book Was Better. I'm Jessica McLeod. And I'm Luke Milton. And today we have something very special. Now, you know, this this book really does show you that there are no limits when it comes to novelization. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 there's no limits. No boundaries and no shame no, either. No, that's true. Look, if I asked you before all this when you were still an innocent, what would you say is the one thing that you wouldn't turn into a book? I would say a musical because, I mean, that would be crazy. How would you capture people just spontaneously bursting into song and dance? Can't do it. Doesn't Doesn't happen in a novel. No, absolutely. But the high school musical phenomenon has been turned into everything and it has been turned into a novel. And it's pretty special. I found myself um, really worried when I read this about the future of society. These are the young people who are going to be looking after us when we're very old. It reminded me a lot of my high school days. It was yeah. like just flipping back through the memories. Absolutely. Um, Were you um, a Gabriella? Yeah, I was. I don't know any of these characters' names. I'm just realising. <laughs> Is that Vanessa Hudgens? <laughs> yeah, she, the pretty uh, the pretty one. The heroine. The heroine. Yeah. Yes. I see you more as a Sharpe. A Sharpe, yeah. I was thinking uh, more of her brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Her uh, brain damaged brother. Mm. Look, if if you are a child and you found this podcast by searching for a podcast on High School Musical, please stop because we're very old. We're very bitter, aren't we? We we're don't have joy cynical. in our hearts. We're a little snarky. We can't enjoy things on a pure level. We begrudge people their success. And and their their happiness, I think. So yes, we we're gonna be mean about high school musical. <laughs> Look, High School Musical is an amazing phenomenon. It it was actually a TV movie, and now it's a multi-million dollar industry. And here are some facts. It was released on January 20, 2006, and it became the most successful film that the Disney Channel original movie ever produced. Or Decom. Decom. It's the most successful Decom ever. 
That's amazing. The DVD created a sales record when 1.2 million copies were sold in its first six days. What? Fastest selling television film of all time. You hear about people in comas or in jail for a long period of time Mm -hmm. and then they wake up and they find the world around them strange and confusing. (laughs) I almost wonder, like, what it would be like to hand such a person this book and say, just read that, tell me what you think, and then, now would you believe that this is like a billion dollar (laughs) phenomenon? Because that just confuses the absolute shit out of me. I know, I know. And I think I think the secret to it is that um, some people think that this, these books are made for, oh, this film, sorry, are made for teenagers, and they're not. They're made for 8 to 10-year-olds, and I think that's the secret of their success is because this is what an 8 to 10-year-old imagines high school or kind of hopes high school is going to be like. Gabriella, um, pretty. Yeah. Basketball. <laughs> but this is amazing. This is the, the novel, this novel. High School Musical, which we both read, hit number one on the New York Times best-selling list and remained on the list for 16 weeks. Get the fuck out. Is that true? It is actually true. I'm not going to accept that. I'm going to leave. <laughs> I'm going to leave Best this episode seller. because that is bullshit. That book that I read. I know. It's barely wow. even a book. And All right. As- well, thank you, everybody. It's been great. <laughs> I am retiring. Luke's going to kill himself. From reading. <laughs> um, as of <laughs> August 2007, the novel had sold more than 4.5 million copies. And you know what? I believe it because I found at least 4.4 million copies in Perth's op shops. That's creative. It everywhere. People. That's incredibly depressing, isn't it? Usually we share the novel because they're kind of hard to find. We had our own novel. Got each. our own copies. Could have had many times over our own copies. This is huge. And you know what? The kids love it. Well, tell me about this because um, I see you've hit up Amazon. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this made me so happy. It has an average of four stars. So um, think of this as a counterpoint uh, to what we're going to uh, say about this book. If you want to hear some positive things, uh, maybe this is a good little moment for the kids because uh, this is its reception. Kids, this is, this is what you think of HSM. This isn't Judith. This is her son. I have seen the movie many times and have the soundtrack, and if you are a diehard HSM fan, then you should definitely add this to your collection of high school musical items. It was just like the movie, except they messed some of the lines up, and we'll get back to that later. I also didn't like how when the songs were written in, they only put the beginning to the songs that Troy and Gabriella sang. They also kind of mixed up the lyrics to the chorus of Get Your Head in the Game, which you could easily notice when you read it if you know the lyrics by heart. Come on, guys, get your head in the game. I think if they're going to put lyrics in, they should put them all in or none at all. I also think if they're going to do the lyrics for Troy and Gabriella's song, then they should definitely put the beginning to Sharpe and Ryan's songs. This is someone who likes Sharpe and Ryan. Mm. Well, who doesn't? That's really confusing. But this is a young boy with a high school musical collection, let's not forget. He's probably a big fan of Ryan and Sharpe. <laughs> yes. Um, the book was great. The lines were mixed up sometimes. And then in quotes, I love to bake. Strudel, scones, even apple pan dowdy. But in the book, they put scones, then strudel. Heretics. Once again, if you are a diehard fan like I am, then you might be disappointed in that. Look, this kid still gave it four stars, but he was a little disappointed. Well, you would be. They've uh, messed with the the legacy. This is another great um, review, and I believe this is um, from a school school group. Apparently, they had some kind of um, some kind of school... brain damage. <laughs> I was going to say assignment where they had to write um, book reviews. Lapse in judgment. (laughs) In the book High School Musical, Troy Bolton and his dad were playing one-on-one basketball and his dad is also his b-ball coach, which I would find very hard. The way to keep Troy going is he'll look middle, you take it downtown is always what Coach Bolton says to Troy. (gasps) My opinion on this is great because I love the movie too. I give them both five stars. The drama teacher, Mrs. Darbus, also Troy and Gabriella's home teacher, is always a grumpy gill. Oh, don't be a grumpy gills. I'm too full of herself. She feels that no one has any homeroom manners because the class is too talkative when they're really not. Her exact words were, I expect we all learned our homeroom manners yesterday. If I had a teacher like that, I would probably never go to that class or even school. I would shit. Whenever Mrs. Darvis talks, it just troughs me off. (laughs) Because You're troughing me off, grumpy girls. (laughs) It just troughs me off because she absolutely... Wait, it just troughs me off because she absolutely no sense to me. Like when she says musical arts is clean cleansing for the soul. Seriously, she needs to get a grip and not only think about musicals and herself and the drama club members. Another thing I don't like about this book is how Ryan and Sharpay only think they are going to win the musical. 
Yeah, this book would be better with zero conflict or uh, problems for the characters. And also, it's very important to children to win the musical. They only think how they are going to win the musical and that they've been in 17 school musicals and are never going to lose against everybody ever. Then somehow, one day, all the cliques and groups came together as one big group. I would recommend this book to anybody who loved the movie. Wow. Five stars. And there's yeah. one more. Can I do this one? Yes, I really I'm want gonna, to. I'm just going to walk this one back a little bit. <laughs> I think that's probably wise. <laughs> I love High School Musical so much, I love reading this book. The movie is my favourite. Can't wait till High School Musical 2 comes out in January 2007. I have the High School Musical book bag, the CD, the DVD, the calendar and posters. Five stars. (laughs) And I think if you can say anything about this novel, it's a real book bag of a novel, isn't it? It's uh, it's something. It's a something (laughs) bag. The iPad from which... You were reading is now covered in your spit. It just wipes right off. <laughs> All right. I'm getting a little hysterical. <clears throat> so I think we talked about different kinds of novelizations, and I think this is actually a new one. This isn't the um, lazy, sloppy, rubbishy one, and it isn't one where they're kind of the author is actually, you know, invested in what they're writing. This is actually a faithful retelling. So Even though this was written by a real person, I kind of don't feel like we should slander them because they literally wrote down the stupid shit that happens in that stupid movie. Well, yeah, I mean, talking about this book, we're really, in a way, just going to be talking about the movie because they're pretty much one and the same thing. But it is it is pretty funny, though, still, because the things that happen in High School Musical are pretty stupid. But when you write them out, they're even stupider. And it's got the um, most muddy, shitty stills <laughs> they're amazing, in they? the middle of the book. Um, I'm surprised Disney couldn't get better uh, screenshots. And I'm kind of disappointed that um, none of Vanessa Hudgens' special photos ended up in here either. Oh, yeah, let's, let's not talk about that. And speaking of Vanessa Hudgens, this, this book is all about the characters, isn't it? So we're going to dive in? I think so. Let's Jess, do it. let's win this musical. Oh, let's do it! Woo! <laughs> Okay, of course, our hero is Troy. Troy uh, is complex. Uh, He plays basketball and he's handsome in the face. He's very dreamy. He is dreamy. He's a dream boat. But he's got problems. He's, you know, like any teenager, he has problems. He's very handsome. He's very good at basketball, but he's also very good at singing. Are they the kind of problems you had as a teen or or, or tween? It's the problem of the whole book, isn't it? That um, everybody really should be good at one thing. Yes, exactly. And if you accidentally become good at something else, uh, it really, people don't have a reference point for you anymore and it makes you very difficult to define. I love that Disney has tackled this issue because it's something that, you know, a lot of um, a lot of movies tackle things like drug abuse or bullying or teen pregnancy. And this is, I think, the first uh, text to tackle the problem of being very good at two things. Yes, it is about Troy, the very first person in the world to be good at more than one thing. Dreamboat, uh, Troy. Oh, uh, look, the best way to describe Troy is in uh, the author's words. Troy had the ball and he was doing a good job of getting around his dad. After all, Troy was on the high school basketball team. Not only that, he was team captain. He had the smooth moves and explosive action of a real star. Wow. And look at this. Troy grinned back. Nothing felt better than playing basketball when you were in the groove. This is about how Troy got his groove back, really, isn't it? Literally nothing does feel better than playing basketball, though. In the groove. In the groove. Once Mm. you're in there, it's so good. But meanwhile, in another part of the lodge... Another mother was about to tear her daughter away from a different fascinating activity. What? What was she? She was reading. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, that's that's now. Now we're introducing Gabriella. Gabriella is another complex character. She's good at being smart, but she's also good at singing. Oh, these guys are going to have nothing in common. I mean, Troy plays basketball and she's really smart. I just don't see how this can work. Uh, You know what? Honestly, I felt the same way, but let's not stop there. Hmm. Let's keep going. Because this might surprise you. What about Chad? Now, that's Troy's (laughs) friend. Chad. Chad, you know, if you haven't seen a picture of Chad, you could probably still uh, guess a little bit at his looks and perhaps his ethnicity. Now, it would be uh, very inappropriate to, to call him Troy's black friend, but the author does a pretty good job of making it clear. His friend and basketball teammate Chad came up to him yelling, Yo, doggy, Troy, my hoops boy. Chad had wild curly hair and a wired attitude to match. 
If you know what I mean. And Those he, people. And he, and he was very black. Yeah. They say things like my hoops boy. I've my- <laughs> I've seen I've seen the wire. I know how they talk. They say my hoops boy. My hoops boy. It's street talk. Interesting. We talked about the difference between uh, the film and the book, and there's not a lot of difference, but one difference is that the book makes Chad, the hoops boy, stupid and lazy. That's not cool. Yeah, I know. In in fact, all his agility and finesse on the basketball court translated into total clumsiness when he picked up a hammer. Duh, how done I do hammer? Then he tries to hide inside a fake tree and he falls asleep and falls out of the tree. What are you saying? N.B. Grace, a fake name if I ever heard one. Oh, black people stay on the basketball court. It's a bit offensive to fall asleep in a tree. <laughs> For some reason... Very, the, very racial. It is. It, well, it's racial politics. Maybe maybe NB Grace is starting the conversation, starting the dialogue. <laughs> For some reason, there's a character called Kelsey who um, composes the musical. I want to address this. The musical she composes is called Twinkle Town. Could be worse. Could be Tinkle Town. <laughs> <laughs> but that, it makes it clear that this, this teenage girl has composed this musical that everyone wants to be in, and it's called Twinkle Town. Troy, the uh, hoops boy, wants to be in. Uh, it's bizarre. Anyway, this kid Kelsey is um, in love with Troy, um, made very clear in the book. Um, but in the story, she doesn't get a look in. Everything goes to um, to Gabriella, and all, all Kelsey gets is a, a little bit of uh, self-esteem boost. He, he calls her the playmaker. And this fucking blows her mind. I am? Kelsey had never thought of it that way before. But now that Troy Bolton, THE Troy Bolton, had said it, she had to admit it made a certain kind of sense. Feeling bold and strong for the first time, she sat at the piano. It's like the first time in her life she's ever had any self-esteem. Well, sometimes it takes a cute boy. That's true. A a hoops boy. (laughs) A hoops boy. Yo, doggy. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. Speaking of hoops boys, there's a lot of, um, you know... As I said before, we're very old. Well, there's a real dichotomy here, isn't there, between the um, the kids' characters versus the adult characters. And what I learned was adults are really stupid, but mm-hmm. kids, they're totally cool. And you know what? Kids um, kids are a little bit different to when we were kids, I think. I think kids are, uh, kids are a lot more streetwise these days. They're far more sophisticated. They are. And I think that I learned a little bit about the teens and the tweens. And their slang. Oh, I love the slang. I'm going to start using it all the time. For instance, Troy gets invited to a kid's party because uh, the adults were having their own party. He doesn't like that. Kid's party, Troy protested. That made him sound like a toddler. <laughs> he's, not a, he's not a toddler. He's he plays. A, he, could he shoot hoops and be a hoops boy if he was a toddler? Should be called a tween's party, man. How much fun could hanging out with a bunch of kids possibly be? That's a pretty normal thing, I think, for um, for a teenager to think. I would rather be playing basketball with my father than hanging out with other kids because how much fun could kids be? They're not that fun. They're not that great. They have very runny noses. Gabriella's mother is a bit more with it. She knows that it's not called a kid's party. Uh, she says, there's a teen's party. I've laid out your best dress. Still find it really weird. To, I just could not picture Vanessa Hudgens wearing clothes. <laughs> You're a creep. You're so creepy. She was 20. <laughs> Ew. <clears throat> um, she was 25 in my head. Oh, Jesus. Moving on. Um, <clears throat> there's, of course, a karaoke uh, every, everyone, of course, listening to this has seen HSM several times. I don't really need to say this, but there is a karaoke scene in the ski lodge. And uh, and this is one of my favourite lines from both the movie and the book. As two teenagers finished their song, the MC called out cheerfully, How about that for a couple of snowboarders? <laughs> what does that mean? Well, I think that in uh, in oh, in these days... I get it. No, it's because, it's because you can only be good at one thing. That's true. And and they were snow they were snowboarding it. Don't tell me Troy's hiding <laughs> hiding a third thing. <laughs> no, these are other kids. I I just assumed it was because snowboarders was like teen slang for douchebags. But yeah, your your explanation <laughs> makes sense too. Do you think uh, NB Grace snowboards? <laughs> I think she hates snowboarders. But um, I think we really get a sense of the uh, kids when they all arrive at school because that's their natural element. That's when we see all the hierarchies and what actually happens We all happens remember there. those those uh, those heady days. They're not here to learn either. Did you notice that? The kids were piling out of buses, yelling at each other, showing off new clothes. Look at my fucking clothes! 
kids, look at my shorts. I has a book bag. <laughs> uh, there's there's some complicated rituals that kids go through when they find each other. As Troy entered the courtyard under the banner that read "Happy New Year, Wildcats," other students gave him high fives, low fives. And side fives. Troy has all the fives. I like side fives. I'd like to give him a bunch of fives. <laughs> the thing that annoys me is that there's a lot of really kind of nasty stuff that's quite true to teenage life that isn't actually addressed and is just sort of normalised in the book. Yeah, I don't like the values in the book at all. I mean, there's this really dumb pack mentality. Oh, um, abso- especially amongst the basketball kids. There's more high-fiving. Troy laughed and the other members of the Wildcat basketball team nodded and high-fived each other. Yes, Nod. I agree um, with your laughter. This is what put me off. He howled like a wolf in appreciation of his own joke. His teammates joined in. Um, And I instantly here took the side of Taylor McKessie, who's the um, president of the chemistry club and her brainiac friends. Yeah, what the fuck? They're always called brainiacs. What does NB Grace have against smart kids? The brainiacs. Against science. Taylor scornfully eyeballed the basketball players, then said to her friends, Ah, behold the zoo animals heralding in the new year. How tribal. And I was right with her. Yeah, I think that's a pretty normal thing for a teenager to say, and I think that is right on the money. I like the way that the Brainiacs are actually on equal footing with the popular kids, and they are kind of bullies in their own right. Yeah, I mean, they, unless they just sort of cut out the sequence afterwards where Taylor's head was forcibly <laughs> flushed down the toilet. Look, another thing I like about this is it's got a lot of up-to-date references, and I, I, I sometimes I struggled because, you know... Growing up in the in the fifties and sixties, as you and I did, uh, we don't <laughs> know a lot of these these people. Chad laughed and shook his head. Do you think LeBron James or Shaquille O'Neal ever auditioned for their school musical? It's timeless. This book. I, I, it is and, timeless. And you know what? He makes a good point. Do you think they did? I think they probably did. Do you think Shaquille O'Neal auditioned for that rapping genie <laughs> movie? <laughs> I think, yeah, I think he probably had to go through a lengthy audition uh, phase for that one. <laughs> I think there are a lot of people who wanted that role and um, and he was pretty lucky to get it. Lucky man. He- here's another great normal thing that a totally normal teenager would say. Troy, the music in those shows isn't hip-hop or rock or anything essential to the culture. This wasn't uh, Chad by <laughs> any chance, was it? Chad, listen. Just a guess. We all know... That the black people know about popular culture and the hip-hop. So he's good at basketball, he likes hip-hop, and he falls asleep in trees. Yeah, that's right. Worrying and be grace, not cool. Oh, can I say this one? I'm sure this would be great coming from me. I bet you say it all the time. Isn't Troy Bolton just the hottie super bomb? Doesn't work yeah, with our accents. Yeah. Something about that the kind of super bomb. Val- the valley girl yeah. um, kind of. Uh... But even even without it, I think that there's something in there that really resonates, and I. I really think that that's probably something that normal teenagers say all the time. We are so old. We are so old. That was what I felt the whole time. I'm so old. But I have picked up a lot of really good sayings and I am actually, I'm, I'm insinuating them into my daily speech. For instance, if those science girls get Gabriella hooked up with Troy Bolton, the Scholastic Club goes from drool to cool. I actually use that in a meeting today. Drool to cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I actually, yeah. Look, if we can get this spreadsheet updated with all the measurements, it'll go from drool to cool. Gentlemen, profits are up 25% this year. We have officially gone from drool <laughs> to cool. <laughs> it's very much about the cliques. This, it is. this whole this whole thing, as we can tell, the, the scholastic club, the the basketballers, the um, you're well, good at you're good at one thing, and that's how you're labelled. So in every high school, there were the brainiacs, the jocks, the band kids, the cheerleaders, the slackers. And every group was its own clique. No one ever moved from one clique to another. No one. Yeah, that's, that's pretty serious. That's that's it. So if you're a basketballer that learns the guitar, you're fucked. Yeah, absolutely. You'll be shunned. My favourite group is the slackers. They've got nothing. They're literally, their only purpose in life is to not do anything. That's what they're good at. Yeah. Why deny them that? <laughs> what was your one thing that you were good at in I... high school? Oh. You gotta pick it. You gotta pick a group. Being accused of being a lesbian. <laughs> there we go. Mine was <laughs> masturbating. Yeah, yeah, I could have seen that coming. You know, so obviously Troy has this uh, has this problem of being good at two things. The first person ever, literally to ever, at, uh, to be good at two things. Because uh, his dad good at one thing. Yep, yep. Basketball. Mm-hmm. And this is the other thing. See, that makes it easy. 
we had to think about what we were good at. But if you're, you've got a parent that was oh, yes. really good at one thing, easier to just go with that. Yeah, I, I think, think so. It's certainly in um, Troy's dad's case. And I like this, what he says. Basketball, he kept saying to himself. Keep your eye on the prize, Troy. Don't think about anything except basketball. Troy's father certainly only thinks basketball. Funny, Coach Bolton thought. I could have sworn I just saw Troy. He looked round, but his son was nowhere in sight. The coach shrugged. I must be seeing things. Must be the pressure of the big game, he thought, <laughs> and went on. So even he's even denying like what he's seeing in front of him, <laughs> dismissing them as ghosts and apparitions. I must be hallucinating. It must be about basketball. I like that they're both only, you know, basketball, he kept saying to himself. Here's Troy walking around the school <laughs> going, basketball, 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 <laughs> basketball, basketball, basketball. Hey, Troy, do you want basketball, basketball, basketball. I like, I like the scene where he carves the word basketball into his leg. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, you know, this this is when everything's going good, but everything doesn't keep going good. I mean, there are problems. Uh Gabriella puts it really well. Troy, the whole singing thing is making the school whack. Talk about your first world problems. That's that's the problem of this school. That's the only thing. It's funny actually. I mean, as Australians reading this because you hear about a lot of problems in American high schools. Mm. You hear about violence, um, gun shooting, drugs. Mm -hmm. And um, it's sort of like a curtain lifting when you realise that one of the big problems that people don't talk about is singing. Mm. And mm. how just, just one person singing, especially if they're a basketballer, can, can make a whole school environment uh, really whack. It's actually something I wish that The Wire had um, had looked at because they did look at the school system and they looked at, you know, drugs and the cycle of poverty, but mm. I think that they kind of glossed over singing and I think maybe it was just a little bit too real, a little bit too real to show on television. It's uh, a little edgy, a little confronting. Speaking of edgy and confronting, teachers, am I right? They're awful. They are not cool unless they teach sports, but otherwise pack of uh, snowboarders. They're whack. <laughs> and Mrs. Ms. Darbus um, is particularly whack and she's quite quite the um, subtle character. Yeah, no stereotypes here, no broad brushstrokes. Um... Gabriella went to her homeroom with Ms. Darbus, the school's drama teacher. True to her theatrical background, she was flamboyantly dressed in a long flowing dress and wore oversized glasses. Now, as someone uh, with a theatrical well, yes, background... Yes, I knew this would come up. Um... Well, look, we're recording in my room. If you just look in the wardrobe there, Jess, you will see my uh, dress and my oversized glasses. They're actually too big to put on right now because <laughs> uh, I'm not in a theatre. But if I was, uh, you would see you would see me transform. You've got to be true to your theatrical background, Luke. I do. It's um, You actually uh, get them given to you in a big envelope when you begin. This is something that always bothered me about um, American TV in general. <laughs> and maybe it's, um, it's something that is real, but it really didn't happen happen in my school is that the kids get to run out of the room as soon as the bell rings did that happen at your school no and it's like they have absolutely no control or the or authority over the situation no matter they could be mid-sentence they could be anything the kids all just pile out of there and the teachers are absolutely helpless to stop them this is a minor character speaking who's um apparently his role in the book slash film is to ask stupid questions he raised his hand and asked sincerely so how were your holidays Ms. Darbus? As everyone looked at him in disbelief, the bell rang. The class bolted for the door, relieved to be free of Darbus' rule for the time being. So, like, adults are played as these broad, clueless stereotypes. But I just... It, it kind of irritated me as an adult. I was just as like, an old person. It was. I was like, fuck you, you dumb teenagers. You will get old and be clueless. <laughs> and curly Afro kids that say dude and bro and dog are going to make fun of you. So, fuck you. Don't think that it won't happen. And... It, you know what? The whole the whole message of the book is really quite confusing because you know I would I would assume that you know, first of all it's a musical it's about how great musicals are you think that it's actually trying to sell you you would think it would be pro musical <laughs> but at the same time the the teacher the musical the drama teacher is just made fun of she's constantly sent up and theatre is is just a ridiculous kind of stupid thing and to she's do just in this school. big pretentious fuck who says stuff like. Perhaps the most heinous example of mobile phone abuse is ringing in the theatre, Miss Darbus was saying. What temerity, for the theatre is a temple of art, a precious cornucopia of creative energy. What a stupid bitch. She's like, and she's stupid and boring because she uses big words as well, as yeah. opposed to like short words like dog and bro. Hoops boy. And hoops boy. Yeah, absolutely. Shits me. <laughs> yeah, I hate kids. I hate them. 
Okay, now Jess, let's talk about the singing here because I'm dying <laughs> to know how um, they fit these songs into a novel. Yeah, really badly, I think is the answer. <laughs> See, that surprises really me. Really unnaturally, uh, painfully, oddly. But there are a few cheats here and this actually surprised me. So like yeah. this first song is a karaoke contest. Yeah. So therefore the song happens naturally. But what I thought was really nice was seeing the lyrics written down it really gave us a great opportunity to reflect on their meaning and um, oh they're like they're like poetry you know people buy Bob Dylan's uh, lyrics as as poetry books and this is pretty much the same thing I didn't realize just how deep and thoughtful some of these were let's uh, have a go let's look at Troy and Gabriella's duet in let's the lodge do it. living in my own world didn't understand that anything can happen when you take a chance I never believed in what I couldn't see. I never opened my heart to all possibilities. I like understand and chance. I like that uh, that rhyme. Yeah. <laughs> That's a nice one. <laughs> yeah. Because they're both very difficult words to rhyme. Yeah. Um, but I think obviously the writer really wanted to make a very specific point and maybe sacrifice that for, uh, for, for meaning, I think. It is, I'm still just letting it all sink in. It is, it's very deep. The next one tries to cover the fact that the basketball is in the movie Breakout into <laughs> Song uh, by pretending that they're just calling drills. Uh, it says, the balls began to bounce and the players began to move across the floor with their rhythmic percussive <laughs> movement. And Troy began to call out the practice drills. Yeah, it's not like they're prancing around singing. They're doing a drill. It's, yes. It just happens to be rhythmic and percussive. Well, the Wildcats have developed a team motto and now Troy shouted it out to get his boys pumped up. Fucking... The lyrics are supposed to be a motto. It's a motto. This is the team motto. So, boys, remember our motto. <laughs> it's... Coach said to fake right and break left. Watch for the pick and keep an eye on defence. you got to run the give and go and take the ball to the hole. Freudian. Don't be afraid to shoot the outside J. Now, what does the J stand for in this? I don't know. It might be a... Ba- I'm not a basketballer. I'm not ashamed to admit that. Jism? Possibly. <laughs> I just really like that motto. Oh, hang on, hang on. I've just got to go and shoot the outside <laughs> J. I'll be back in about five minutes. <laughs> but, like, what kind of a fucking motto is that? No, but, Jess, you're getting confused. You're forgetting that you've got to run the give and go and watch out for the pick. Yeah, I... That's... You, you weren't watching out for the pick, yeah. were you? I'm no hoops boy. <laughs> that's that's the truth. Is that is that sports jargon? Do you think take oh, the ball to the hole? I've just got to go and take the ball to the hole. <laughs> it's, it's, it sounds really... like he's just eating a buffet. <laughs> Kind of sounds like someone who's who watched their first basketball game, but with the sound turned off. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, take that uh, ball into the hole and. Uh... Hey, take that ball to the hole. <laughs> Uh, and this this great motto has a has a wonderful effect on the um, dancers. Uh, I mean basketball players. The team members smiled and moved even faster, smoother, better. Troy was a great captain, and he could motivate them like no one else. Except maybe his dad. Well, his dad obviously. His dad well, was the coach. He and he also, you know, he he's the one who said to fake left and break right, or the other way around. Anyway, when uh. Practice ended, everyone took deep breaths, smiling at how great they felt and how great they had looked. (laughs) Guys, we lost by a lot, but I don't care because, Chad, you're Afro, man. It was looking awesome out there. Everyone's talking about it. They're not talking about the score. Take a deep breath and smile, kids. (laughs) Because you're you're, you're good-looking guys, all of you. You know what's weird about this book is that there's actually not a lot of music (laughs) in this (laughs) musical. You know? No, well, that is true. I mean, I was feeling that. I'm at page 50 and I'm going, you know what? We've had these two songs. Yeah. And they weren't really songs. Yeah, exactly. But page 64, we get oh. a brief snippet. But again, this is a song sung at an audition. It's not a true musical number that comes out of nowhere. So but I'm very disappointed. It made me cry. Did it make you cry? Let's hear it. And I'll cry all over again. <laughs> it's hard to believe that I couldn't see you were always there beside me. Thought I was alone with no one to hold. This is a, a billion dollar <laughs> phenomenon here. Bestseller okay. list. New York Times bestseller list. Not only that, Jess, can I just, as a creative work, like who fucking wrote High School Musical? Who wrote, <laughs> the, who wrote these songs? I, I understand it was actually a robot, a tween bot. 
It was a, a collaboration between um, life partners Mickey and Minnie Mouse <laughs> uh, in that riding at the top of the Sleeping Beauty castle. There's something really wrong with it, isn't there? It's it's very it's funny watching this stuff as an adult because you can see how cynical it is and how much of a cash grab it is. Yeah, it's like it was written by ticking boxes on a survey. Exactly, exactly. What do teens like? What what do um, teens find hard to believe? Yeah. Uh, that they couldn't see that you were always there beside me? Yeah. There's nothing worse than of being... Of course, she's known him for like 15 minutes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. That's... Look, sorry. And going back to the very beginning of the book, this really gives me the shits. They exchange numbers. Then she turns up at his school because she's transferred. And he's like, what the fuck? So they haven't called each other? Don't they understand the reason behind giving each other your number? Teenagers are a very cowardly, um, suspicious lot, especially sexless Disney teenagers. That's true. That's true. There is not even a kiss in this movie. That I found actually really quite creepy. But that's how you become a huge multi-million dollar yeah. thing, isn't it? You don't offend anybody. That's true. You it's appeal as as to everybody, like Garfield. Yeah, it's low, lowest common denominator. But Fuck um, them. <laughs> yeah. I'm so angry. Um, the, I have to say, possibly my favourite part of the whole book is uh, the scene where they actually, they start singing and there's no way that the author can disguise this. It's not karaoke, it's not a basketball drill, it's just these fucking teenagers who start spontaneously singing in the cafeteria. And this is the way that um, that the book's, book describes this. As if he was just waiting for that cue, Zeke, a tall, burly basketball player with a killer smile, began singing. The other jocks gathered around. Curious. By curious. <laughs> this, you know, you were talking about them as like wild animals and a, and a pack. <laughs> this is what that sounds like to me. It's like one of the bonobo chimps has found, <laughs> has found a, a soft leaf and has begun <laughs> masturbating <laughs> with it. The others gather around him. Curious. Very jealous of that <laughs> leaf. Uh, we got to do this one in together. Yeah, okay. I, I, I love this. This is this is so, the song about. Um, it's, I think it's called "Stick to the Status Quo" or something like that. And it's literally about not doing anything except that one thing that, <laughs> that identifies you. Good, I wish that that was what this whole thing is called. <laughs> that one good, one, one good thing. <laughs> so the basketballers don't want Troy to sing, so they sing a rehearsed song in protest. Yeah, maybe. Well, it's like leading by example, sort of showing him, you know. Look at what big dicks we look like <laughs> singing this song. This you don't want to look like ridiculous. that, Troy. You're a dreamboat. Would you like to have a go I've at this I've seen your song? rudder. <laughs> no, 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 no. Stick to, to the, the stuff you know. If, if you, you want to be cool, follow one simple rule. Don't mess with the flow. No, no. Stick to, to the status quo. I think that was beautiful. The scene is even more fucked up and weird in book form. Um, yeah. Listen to this. The spirit of rebellion was building, however. The skater dude jumped up on his table and enthusiastically mimed playing the cello. <laughs> Brainiac Martha was busting out some cool hip-hop moves from the top of her table, dancing and swaying to the rhythm in her head. Oh, because no music's playing. No, this is know, all in silence. These kids are all just spontaneously doing this. The students who had confessed their secret loves were now all standing on their respective cafeteria tables as if they were on stages singing their hearts out. It's just really surreal, isn't it? <laughs> It's like someone suddenly retelling a dream to you. <laughs> and then he was miming the cello. <laughs> a skateboarder what? miming the cello? Can you believe it that? It makes no sense. I know, because the author is determined to stick with this fallacy that these are just normal teenagers and nothing out of the ordinary is happening. This is just happening right now. Just Get over it. If I had a child that showed a proficiency in any sport and then they picked up a musical instrument, I would slap it out of their hands. Yeah, I would beat them with it. <laughs> Once again, you know, we're, we're, <clears throat> we're still pretending this is a normal thing to do. Gabriella felt so sad, so alone, and just as she'd been doing since New Year's Eve, she started to express herself in song. This was August and it was getting really tiring <laughs> for everybody, wasn't it? It was just really getting on everybody's nerves. I love this. And I think this is, you know, this is a time of angst. It's a time of pain. Uh, it's it's a very difficult time for teenagers to go through. And I think this really encapsulates it. Luke, you want to have a go with this one? It's funny when you find yourself looking from the outside. I'm standing here, but all I want is to be over there 
why did I let myself believe miracles could happen? Because now I have to pretend that I don't really care. Oh, that's sweet. That's deep. It is. When you it's... find yourself looking from the outside. Look, I'm standing here, but all I want is to be over there. I just, it's, it's not even a metaphor. <laughs> no, no, no. It's because there's a, um, a, a bit of sunlight coming through the window. She's in the shadow. Well, she's not the only one who gets her, um, her creepy, what is it? It's not a monologue when you're singing it. Solo, that's the word. That's a songologue. Because <laughs> Troy climbs onto her balcony while he's talking to her on the phone. How creepy is that? I, I personally, was this before or after Twilight? I don't like this whole, you know, climbing in through girls' windows and surprising them is a cute romantic thing to do. No, it trend. never it never goes down as, as well as you think it will. Yeah. Uh, try this, boys. Girls will love it. Troy lowered his phone and began to sing to her directly, sweetly, honestly. Go on. Give us some Troy. Start of something new. It feels so right to be here with you. Oh. <laughs> and now, looking in your eyes, I feel in my heart the start of something new. I mean, Troy, you do not <laughs> even really know her. I mean, you may as well be singing like, you know, I like big butts for all the, <laughs> the meaning it would have. They've known each other for about three days and the only thing they have in common is that they can both sing and they're both terrified of that fact. It's not her personality, is it? I mean, he just probably just wants to bang her. I'm surprised he didn't just, like, climb in her window and spoon her while she <laughs> slept. But I don't think anything really compares to the final song, which is... Which is is beautiful and of course it's written without punctuation so um I, it, it really takes on whole new meaning we're soaring flying there's not a star in heaven that we can't reach if we're trying yeah we're breaking free you know the world can see us in a way that's different than who we are creating space, space between, between us, us till, till we're separate, separate hearts but, but your faith, faith it, it gives, gives me strength strength, strength to, to believe, believe. What the fuck? I think it's about Jesus. <laughs> of course, creating space between us, leave room for the Holy Ghost. But your faith gives me strength, strength to believe. I think it's specifically about not doing the dancing where you hump each other at the school dance. I think you have to sign a contract. <laughs> a contract with, with Jesus not to <laughs> give it up until you're married. You get a special ring. And after this, this whole singing bullshit goes down... This is, this is what happened. This is the denouement. The teams eyeballed each other. Then Chad held up a hand. Taylor high-fived it. Everyone broke into grins. I like the idea of him really stoically kind of holding up a hand in silence, like with that sort of expression where, <laughs> you know, like in a gladiatorial games when everyone looks up at Caesar and it's like, how's he going to react? <laughs> you know, is he going to approve? Is he not going to approve? Chad's just there, steely-faced, raises his hand. And everyone goes, yeah! yeah high fives! He Yo, doggy. You know, if he really meant it, though, he would have done a side five. Yeah, or a low five. Um, you know what? I, I hate to get dirty. Always comes down to this, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> it really does. But when I was reading this, I couldn't help thinking that maybe the subtext to this book is the awakening of sexual desire. No. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. But, you know, I, I find it hard to believe that this is about singing. Troy felt a spark of electricity run over his skin. Gabriella felt a warm glow flood through her body. Gabriella felt a warm <laughs> glow flood through her underpants, more like it. <laughs> we all know that feeling. To have, have a warm flood. Can't, yeah. Both of them felt an excited, fizzy feeling inside, as if the world had just become a lot more fun. Erection. Yeah. <laughs> and this is my favourite bit. This is when Gabrielle, Gabrielle confesses her singing experience to her friend. And, you know, it takes a little while. She's ashamed, as, as young girls often are, but, you know, she, she has to learn to own. She doesn't want things to be whack. No, that's true. I told you, it just happened. Then she admitted the real truth. But I liked it a lot. I'll bet you did. Oh! Um, and then, of course, there's possibly the best line of the, the, the book. Troy's mum walked into the gym. She was wearing a sequined party dress and clearly had things other than b-ball on her mind. Well, like, 
dad's balls on her chin. That, that, and once again, it's that thing like both of the boys, the the kid and the dad are just walking around going basketball, 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 basketball. basketball. And the poor mother's like, I'm thinking about something other than basketball. No, <laughs> basketball, basketball, basketball. And um, look, you talk about the success of this book worldwide. I think we got a UK edition here, possibly even an Australian edition, because it is Troy's mum. Yeah, isn't that weird? It's kind of weird. They... As if as if the kids who had seen the film would then read the book and go, what's a mom? <laughs> it's okay. We well, know about moms. Well, then I had to read everything in an English accent. <laughs> it was all, yo, doggy. <laughs> what's up, my hoops boy? <laughs> I say, this singing is making the school totally whack. <laughs> Look. There's some insane writing in here. Insane. <laughs> there really is. It's it's really strange. There's um, you know, mostly it's it's a straight retelling, but you know, obviously it still has to be put into words. This is this is a really weird difference from the film. Um, in the movie, and this is such a small thing, but it really bugged me. In the movie, Gabriella corrects a chemistry teacher's calculations, saying the answer is 16 over pi. You know, that's a reasonable thing. I don't know maths yes, stuff. Whatever, something something maths. In the book. She says it's pi to the 11th power. What the <laughs> fuck? That's a massive number. That's ridiculous. Is it just me? No, I don't understand math. <laughs> I have a problem with the maths in this book. I'm going to write my own Amazon review. This is great. This is this is, makes it even better. The evil Sharpay, <clears throat> who's, who's the baddie um, who wants the role uh, in the school musical, she's plotting. This is what she says. There's no harm in making certain that Gabriella is welcomed into school activities that are appropriate for her. After all, she loves pie. What the fuck does that even mean? Hairy pie? <laughs> <laughs> well, Sharpay's plan is to get her to join like the Scholastic Club. What the fuck does that have to do with pie? Does she... She doesn't, like, hit her with a pie or anything, does she? I don't understand. She says She doesn't, it, like, bake her a pie. She says it like it's this great pun. It's not a pun. Maybe she really likes Magnum P.I. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> This this one's about a boy and his dad. So maybe maybe this one sounds I don't know. It sounded a little strange to me, but maybe you can tell me if it if it sounds right to you. It was almost dark, but Troy was still in his backyard shooting hoops. His father watched approvingly. His boy had moves, he thought. Good moves. Great moves, in fact. And a great ass. <laughs> My boy has moves. Good moves. Great moves. He very uh he's very quick to upgrade those. <laughs> Those moves. <laughs> well, he did it by increments, though. He might- <laughs> He's not like, man, that kid has great moves. He's very cautious. He starts at the lower end of the scale and slowly moves up. <laughs> this is this is great. No, it's really not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's read it anyway. <laughs> Chad con- this is a bit where Chad confronts Troy with the news. There's been a social revolution amongst the students. And that Zeke, one of the basketballers, is unashamedly baking creme brulees. <laughs> Troy frowned, trying to follow all this. There was a lot of confusing information, so he seized on the easiest point to clear up. Creme brulee? This is a guy that falls asleep <laughs> in a tree. No, that's Chad. This is this is Troy. This is a guy who just thinks about basketball all the time. I think that's his problem. Basketball, 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 creme brulee. Whoa! <laughs> It's so confusing. And then this is this is great. This is Mrs. Ms. Darbus walked into the cafeteria. This is when everyone's singing and noticed the unusual sense of turmoil amongst the students. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, and this I love. It's like <clears throat> it's the first time she's ever seen someone mime a cello. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm not um. I'm not really up in this sort of thing. As I said, I'm very old. I don't know about the drugs and the young people and the the jazz cigarettes. But um, Troy invites Gabriella up to the open rooftop garden. Open rooftop garden. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Where plants are being grown, quote, as part of hydroponic experiments. What the fuck? 
First of all, I don't think this author knows what hydroponics are. I think they do. I think this is a little bit of a kind of that one moment. I mean, this poor author writing this must have been a pretty uh, (laughs) soul-crushing experience. It's true. And just went, I'm just going to throw this in. I'm going to throw this in. (laughs) See if they stop me. Come on, Disney. Come on. Or or maybe she just, like, went down to a schoolyard and asked a teenager, so what are your kids into these days? Kids like hydroponics? Oh, gardening, eh? Put that in the book. Might have been on her own rooftop garden uh, with some hydroponics while typing this. <laughs> you know what? This this book, much like our podcast, ends very quickly and abruptly. Well, it's some of these things are very, very brief. Now... That's strange. The teammates try to deprogram Troy. They don't want him to be a basketballer. So they break... They do want him to be a basketballer. No, they do want him to be a basketballer. Very confused. Very... uh, (laughs) Creme brulee. Lots of levels. Basketball, basketball. So they break up him and Gabriella, and then he misses a few baskets, and then they... Hoops, I probably should say. Yeah, he's a hoops boy. And then they support his singing and tell him to get back to singing all in about four pages. Yeah, exactly. It's so weird. And there's this whole thing with, like... Um, this this big plot where they have to they tape him saying something and Gabriella sees it and then he's like I didn't mean it so they're back together and it's just really strange. And then the whole basketball thing happens at the same time as the science thing and the auditions thing. So then they have to pause two of those things so that they can do the other one thing. And they, the way they do this is by turning out the gym lights so that the, um, the basketball game can't go on and they, uh, turn on a Bunsen burner so that the, um, the, they create a crazy smell. Yeah, that's right. It's, It's a stink bomb or something. But the way that they do this is through the internet. They hack the lights and then they hack a Bunsen burner. They, uh, well, it's Disney. They probably Kids today. probably got a Tron on it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Kids today, though, they sure can use those computers. <laughs> you want someone to program your VCR, <laughs> ask a kid and they'll hack it through the internet. Sitting there going, how could uh, a kid turn off all the lights in a gym? Oh, they probably <laughs> use the internet. <laughs> yes, These they days. <laughs> and then suddenly... Everything's fine. This whole uh, problem, all of the conflict that has driven the entire plot is just gone. Everyone's happy and everyone just sings together. Throughout the theatre, the music was casting its spell. The Brainiac girls glanced at the basketball guys and the two groups exchanged friendly smiles. The skater dudes nodded to the drama kids. Hey, if this is musical theatre, it's It's cool, cool, man. (laughs) Wow, they really won the musical. They did. They won the, the musical. Um, the high school musical that, uh, I've got to say, does not appear in this story. Yeah. We never see Twinkle Town. It's true. It's all about the lead up yeah, to a high school musical. Yeah, it's the audition. Musical. You're right. But we never see the musical. Yeah. It's probably shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Twinkle Town. What do you Troy, expect? Troy came off uh, stage on the opening night going, oh, what the fuck was I thinking? <laughs> this is Twinkle Town. This is terrible. <laughs> I, I like to think now that I know why Ryan likes it. <laughs> that this is this is interesting. I don't know if you um have you watched after the credits of High School Musical. I'm assuming that you did. But there's like a little um a cute little what do you call those things? Oh yes, uh, like a little um after the credits bit. Yeah, I think um, that's what you call them. And they've made that the end of the novel. It's a little throwaway bit, and it's actually treated as like almost like a joke or a blooper in the film, but it forms the end of this novel. That's when Sharpay came flying into the crowd, pushing people out of the way to get to Zeke. Is this the baker Zeke? This, this is the baker Zeke who has a crush on Sharpay for some reason because she's fucking awful. She's pretty hot. Your cookies are genius, she yelled. The best thing I've ever tasted. Will you make some more for me, Zeke? Zeke grinned. Of course he would bake for her. In fact, he waggled his eyebrows and said slyly, I might even make you a creme brulee. I'm assuming this is some kind of sick sex thing, right? It sounds... Like a pearl necklace? It sounds unsafe, a creme brulee. (laughs) Kids, creme brulees are sex and you still need a condom. I don't think you can give a creme brulee if you're wearing a condom. Oh, that's true. Actually, that's true. It's not safe, kids. Just don't do it. Don't even listen to us talking about it. <laughs> I'm sure we're going to get pulled off iTunes or something now. I can't stop thinking about it now. Oh, what could it be? I think we've pretty much done. <laughs> I think we should leave it here I, before I just, we get arrested. I just went. <laughs> well, I'm feeling that warm glow. 
<laughs> so um, I hope you really uh, listened to Jess's warning at the beginning of the podcast <laughs> when she said that if you're a child, um, that you shouldn't be listening. And if you did listen, don't talk to a grown-up about it because this is our little secret. And we were talking about baking. Baking. Okay, I've got to go uh, <laughs> drop the ball in the hole. <laughs> i got to go get a creme brulee. So, look, thank you very much uh, for listening again. Oh, before we go. Perhaps I... the last time. <laughs> I just want to say a special thank you to a friend of the show who is Lizzie. Lizzie Unpronounceable. Uh, you may have noticed that we have uh, a song at the beginning of this show and it is written by her. She plays the ukulele. I, uh, I sing. That's and I... you. That's me. That's me. And I play percussion. Oh. Yeah, I know. I'm a... Oh, my God. I'm good at two things. Uh-oh. Holy shit. Shut it down. I'm freaking myself <laughs> out. i got to go. All right. Be sure to join us in a fortnight's time for the next book, which you are going to love. And it's a very, very different experience to High School Musical. Once again, children are not invited. Sexy. Very sexy. We love you. Catch you on the flip side. The flips. You're not supposed to say side. I just said sigh. Oh, catch you on the flips.